Greetings, dear ones. Very good morning to you. I am right now in Ananda Ashram or Nityananda Ashram. It's called. It's named as Ananda Ashram, but it's uh, Nityananda Ashram. The Ashram of Swami Vijayananda. And this is in Belgaum district, the same district that I live in, born and brought up. So the first my experience with Ganesh Puri. After that, second place that I was led to after Ganesh Puri, due to the grace of Bhagwan Nityananda, was Kanjangad. And from Kanjangad, I was led to the third place is this ashram. This is in a small village called Bevin Koppa, which is again in Taluka, Bailongal, comes under district Bilgam, in the state Karnataka. And this is again North Karnataka, South India to be precise. Why I am mentioning all this is because uh, there are many Westerners also who watch this and I need not tell anything to the Westerners about this place because this place was already known by Westerners because by the time I started coming here many years back, that was somewhere in 2009. I saw that many people were coming here. I think so close to around eight countries, Westerners came here. And it is very mysterious that this place never had publicity. Because the ashram was very small that time when I had come here. When I came here. Very, very small. A very humble setting. There only Vijayanam Swami was here. Then, after a few years, it started developing very rapidly. But even during that time, even during that time, I saw a lot of foreigners here. And I was astonished as to how people from all the globe are coming this side and I am just staying one and a half hour from here and I never knew about this place. And then I come in contact with uh, Vijayanand Swami and uh, very, very humble saint. That was my first contact with him. And we met here in this hut only. That time it was just a small hut, no concrete building. Swamiji used to live only in that hut here and do his humble sadhana. And his only sadhana was Nityananda's name, the Japa of Om Namo Bhagavate Nityananda. That's all that he did. Before coming to this ashram, Vijayanand Swami was already living with an avadhut named Sogalajja. I've been there many places, many times. I've done videos also there. He was a very crude avadhut. Uh, very high states and he used to live in a cave in Sogal. Sogal is uh, one and a half hour from here. If you have seen my earlier videos with Mohan Swamiji, whom I've met, the first yogi I ever met in my life was Mohan Swamiji. He also lives in Sogal. But he is from a different parampara, but they are again connected in some way. So, Vijayanam Swami served that avadhut named Sogalaja for many years. And then uh, he left that place and he wandered all this place and he came here without a penny. He was completely, he used to sleep in bus stands. Uh, very, very, uh, I mean, it's a very uh, crude kind of a story. Whenever I listen, I get jitters. Ki, how can life treat somebody like this? Because uh, he, has, he has written his biography also, autobiography of his incidents and things. He has written many books in fact. And all the books, I think only one book is somewhere focused on his life and rest all he has written on Bhagavan Nityananda. And uh, most of the words uh, work was all in Kannada because he writes in Kannada. He is very proficient in Kannada. And that time, this was in 2012 when I came here for the... For a long stay, I stayed here for around 6 or 7 months, I don't remember. And that was the blessed opportunity, I say, of Bhagavan Nityananda, who gave me the opportunity of serving this ashram and translating Swamiji's book from Kannada to uh, English. I was able to be a part of it. A uh, couple of books. And that is the time I actually was reading uh, in depth. Because I don't know Kannada myself, but somebody had, some professor had already translated. I was just doing the proofreading and bringing it to that uh, final production. So that time I was reading through all these in-depths about Swamiji's experience and life and uh, I was like, oh my god, that's something. 
and how he who had nothing who came here and you know uh, today if you see this ashram is grown like anything and he he this is he didn't even own a land or anything here but there are many things if i go in detail it's a, it's a very long story but uh, just to cut it brief he was from a very wealthy family uh, in a place called manjeshwar manjeshwar is near to kanyangad and while he was living there he was he had a lot of interest in drama and uh, poetry and you know stage plays and film line and music that is how he even plays the music and he sings also well he writes he was a script writer i used to write dialogues and screen plays and all that uh, that was his kind of career and he was heavily into alcoholism always boozing so now also when people think from that area when they recollect him they say oh my god what what has happened out of him how was he and you know he was completely uh, on a different track completely on a different track completely negative track negative friends and always boozing and non veg and all those things everything he had all the bad habits and then uh, he some inclinations some indications when that was his prarabdha probably and then when uh, that thinned out and his time was right he got this vairagya his vairagya was very intense from within and then the frequency was not matching with his family people obviously that happens with all of us <laughs> when you wake up when you have an awakening and then you see that all around are not suddenly vibing well to that frequency and swami ji was somebody who never chose to compromise on his on his inner being very authentic person even today most of the you know my inspiration comes from him the authenticity with which which he speaks you know there is no hide and seek everything is open and he doesn't care for who thinks what and all and that imp- that brought him even lot of trouble in his lifetime <laughs> I, i could see that also so it's like there is no compromise you are what you are that's what bhagwan said say what you do and do what you say what is inside should be outside no hypocrisy this is the main theme of chitakasha gita and here i meet somebody who's who has that daring and courage to do that and probably that's how he had lot of troubles in life because he just was himself no compromise everywhere that he went he was just himself so i i'm recording this and uh, leaving this because i i should have started this in uh, that new group that i began nityoham nityanandam it is for all these kind of uh, subjects only related to this but i forgot i started in jake light so i'll be sharing it there and these i want to leave back in a particular place that group so that you know anybody comes they have the essential and clear cut knowledge of bhagwan nityananda and his work because here i am trying to bring those things in in clarity and in depth and here are people who are following that tatvas so what better can be known of bhagwan then somebody who follows that tatva whole and soul whole heartedly every every cell reverberates with that you know very rare to find somebody like that and here i find a saint i i didn't know him that time so here when i come to the ashram and then i was involved in this work and all that stuff and then uh, i got the opportunity of making the website also for this place and all that and that's how i got involved because this work was what made me get more inside and understand in depth so i had i had spent many hours uh, talking with uh, uh, vijayanand swami and he was very kind he took me like a child here it, so it was like home and it's still like home to me this ashram there are no no particular restrictions or no bondages of any kind of bond i'm always feel feel welcome here so any time i want to come i just come here and stay here and do whatever i want all these live and all those things nothing so there's no formality here when i come here i feel very much at home so very peaceful place and and then i was saying yeah that time there was nobody here but i could see a lot of foreigners coming here and, and i wondered i asked swami ji where are they getting information he said i don't know it's probably word of mouth he said because somebody comes and but how are they coming somebody is coming from germany somebody is coming from finland and somebody is coming from us and uh, you know how how is this happening so many countries so he said it's all is leela he does what he has to do we we, we do not know how those things happen it's, and the time is right he brings it's a yoga so 
then a uh, lot of times when i was here swami ji used to ask me to stay back and because the foreigners were there he said just translate tell them because uh, they could not understand anything and swami ji used to only speak uh, even now he speaks only kannada so a little bit of uh, hindi and uh, very he understands malayalam and uh, english but uh, not much so he had difficulty in communicating so most of the time when i used to be here and uh, coincidentally when i used to have some be with some foreigner so i used to translate most of the time those days and then uh, i asked them and they used to tell me all mysterious things you know this is how we read a book here or something very very strange things you know no connections at all some way we had gone to kanjangad we heard and then it's a close place somehow they happened to come here and then i heard that the book has gone the books have gone wide and far so there are many books i would like to show that because this is one place which has got very good information about bhagwan nityananda's life he has written exclusive uh, commentaries he has taken experiences of uh, lot of people lot of people connected with bhagwan nityananda and of course he has been associated he has been uh, living with so many masters who are directly connected with uh, bhagwan nityananda sogalaj the avadut which i am talking he also had connection with nityananda it is said that he he had received uh, uh, diksha from him i don't know how the story goes but somewhere some point of time he had had and uh, even the other masters that he came across with and they were all uh, somewhere connected even karunakar swami see here his photo is even karunakar swami direct disciple of uh, bhagwan nityananda was his guru so he used to go vijayanand swami used to go to the uh, mumbai slums there um, in matunga where karnakar swami used to be there and in fact i started going to all avdutas because of vijayan swami yeah. karnakar swami was my first visit which he took me and twice i went with uh, vijayan swami and great experiences which i have all shared there and that's how i got connected to even karnakar swami and many other uh, mystics in this field then even down south talshari avdut amma which i went It was all guided by uh, Swamiji and his people. So slowly, all these uh, visits began to all avdutas, and he started sending me to Lord because he saw that I was craving for it. So he he knew that I was intensely involved in the avdutas because when I used to come here, even today, whenever I come and sit with Swamiji, we speak for hours together on very very deep subjects and tattvas because and he is very excited because hardly he gets. somebody you know he he that that's his uh, area of uh, expertise which he wants to but there are no takers as i said because these, these are not a very interest to a lot of people so there he shares out his heart very openly and uh, that's what even i want you know my area of interest is only this. so we have a great rapport when even uh, uh, just i when i had uh, returned from delhi two and uh, two years back i spent most of the time around this place and uh, we were doing some work some projects here and i was involved deeply here because i i was uh, connected here that time and i remember we used to sit for late hours like you know hours together like 4 5 6 hours on a stretch uh, myself and uh, there's uh, yadvi one more girl is there here who is committed to the ashram here completely and uh, one other so we used to sit and completely we used to be talking like like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock and then we go sleep and come and he gets up at 4:35 he's he's up and ready to go even at this age he's 70 plus but still ready to go uh, after brahma muhurt and very active i used to find myself dragging out you know sometimes but he was there and we used to do recordings we used to record the chitakasha gita in kannada and we were converting that to audio so The, we were I, i was the recordist there that time and all this is just two years back when i came from delhi so morning again we would begin just after the recording he used to record at 4 4:30 am in the morning so one hour one and a half hour we used to record and then after that we used to begin talking again and then it used to expand throughout the days almost that was like uh, shri alam prabhu alam prabhu was a great 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 mystic great avduta so his vachanas his teachings are so deep so deep basavanna's teachings basavanna is the great mystic the great master from where lingayats came in you know but uh, 
I don't know if uh, the community still follows it because it's very, very deep tattva. It's complete non-duality. But I do see a lot of duality in the uh, communities. So I do not know. But when I reflect and ask him certain things, he says this is the actual vachana. And then he ta- starts talking about how actually what Baswana meant and what it is today. So every everything, everything. Even there was one uh, great mistake uh, during Bhagavan Nityananda's time. Siddhar Swami in Hubli. Hubli is, Hubli is one and a half hour to two hours from Belgaum, from this place where I am right now. South, if you go, Hubli is there. So Siddhar Swami was a great mystic. His Samadhi is still there, very powerful. His, I don't know if you know this, his disciple was Swami Muktananda. Swami Muktananda of Ganeshpuri. Before, what I am trying to tell you, before Muktananda Swami came to Bhagavan Nityananda. His first Guru, Prathama Guru was Siddharud Swami. What I am talking, here just two, uh, two, two hours from here. So, he took Diksha from Siddharud Swami. And Siddharud Swami was a great, great, great mystic. So, uh, Vijayan Swami used to talk about Siddharud Swami a lot. In fact, Siddharud Swami had another Shishya. Uh, her name is Kalavati Ai. She is very famous and she is in Belgaum, my hometown. And she is... Uh, her samadhi is just like 15 minutes uh, 10 minutes drive from my home it's that close so I, I never knew all these connections her samadhi is still there very peaceful even today I go today whenever if I want something to be very deep and if I want a deep connection I go there to Kalavati Ai her name is Kalavati Ai she was a female saint very powerful saint very uh, completely uh, rin- uh, renunciate she, she was a family lady no husband, but she had children. And uh, But she was completely detached. She was loving, she was caring to her kids, but she was completely detached. And uh, when she settled down in Bhagyanagar, Belgaum, that was her home, Kalavati Ai's home. Today, thousands of people come from Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra, all these areas, surrounding areas to the Samadhi. And they have great uh, Sankirtan, very peaceful Samadhi, very peaceful. They do the chant of Om Namah Shivaya. Very, very peaceful. I mean, if you just enter that, there is peace. And very beautifully still managed by the ashram people and all. Very, very delicately and beautifully handled. That energy, they have maintained it. Because that that was that was actually the home of Kalavati Ai, Where she took later Samadhi. So... I am, I am told she she was uh, renunciate to such an extent that while she was once sitting and uh, talking, she was giving a discourse or something to the people, devotees there. And she is a shishya of Siddharudu Swami, yeah? who is the guru of again uh, Muktanan Swami. So somewhere like, you know, they are uh, uh, guru wives uh, or guru bhai bhai, Muktanan Swami and uh, Kalati, if you see that way, technically. So I was told while she was giving discourses, and the news came that her son expired. You know, you can see that. Her son expired and she was like, okay. Uh, she heard the news. She she was a little contemplative, reflected on that. Probably what she did, God knows, prayed or something or something, closed her eyes. And then after that, she continued with the discourse. <laughs> you see the kind of uh, detachment that uh, these people, they have left, they have reached that kind of state, you know, that state of consciousness. So that Kalavati Ai's uh, Samadhi also is there, uh, very close to my hometown. As I said, 10 minutes drive from my home. There I wanted to share it, but uh, shooting and photography is strictly allowed, not allowed. And then that's why I have never been able to bring that place out. But that's a very mystical place. So I was saying all the connection between this, you know, Siddharud, her guru was uh, Siddharud Swami in Hubli. And uh, Swamiji talks a lot about Siddharud Swami. So, in, in fact, today morning also he was talking about how, how the great uh, mystic is. And so deep, so profound truths. These are so profound truths that, you know, hours pass by and we both are not even aware. Food, <laughs> you know, we, we have a lot of cups of, we gulp a lot of cups of tea. Swamiji is very addicted to tea. He loves tea a lot. We try to snatch away that habit from him many times, but he very badly failed because of we didn't want uh, the different outcomes of that tea to happen but he's still okay with it and then this place is uh, visit was visited by many many mystics 
many great mistakes uh, i don't know if you know jangli das maharaj was here uh, my gurudev was here once upon a time they have all come here and gone visited and gone uh, jangli das maharaj i uh, his uh, ashram is in kokamtan close to shirdi i have written a blog on him i had met him once due to grace bhagwan's grace and vijayanand swami had sent me to him so i was able to meet him and talk i have i have written that blog i don't remember where it is now but it's written so he also has been here jangli das maharaj jangli das maharaj is a uh, great uh, mystic and his guru was jangli das uh, complete avdut and uh, he lived in pune he roamed around in pune jungles and all that his uh, samadhi is still there in pune if you see jangli das road there is a place called jangli das road that leads to his samadhi there so his his not even shishya they say it is they say jangli das maharaj is again a reincarnation of jangli das only so he, he is with the long hair and completely detached i had great experiences in his presence also silent man silent so we sat in silence i, I had sat in his cottage in silence and uh, they had allowed me just because i took some his name here to go and that's how i met him so he was here so he has lived in this place there is one cottage here next to this there is a small cottage where uh, was which was given those days to any guests so many saints who used to come here they were given that that cottage so he stayed in that he meditated jangli das maharaj you know he, he was there whole night and all he was there he stayed in that and as i told you many other mystics also i don't remember the names so many so many are there so many he takes so many names all the photographs are there i'll show you uh, i i can't even relate to it you know it doesn't stay in the memory also that kind of people and all these mystics are connected to nityananda very very strange mystical in fact in that room they have still kept that um, and see mysteriously the uh, the blanket that nityananda used you know he used to use many blanket shawl blanket blankets and uh, things in while in ganeshpuri and uh, in places of devotees where his devotees lived he used to go there you know, to their place and sometimes use um, things and that those things were kept you know the things that he used were still kept and those articles are still distributed in many homes in mumbai and even in kerala and there are many people many people whom i met who say that they have uh, these like guru paduka is given by bhagwan nityananda or blanket is given or rudraksh is given these kind of things are there even today there is a, a great uh, devotee shankar nayar ji his father served bhagwan nityananda directly and uh, he even gave him uh, rice rice grains with his hands that also is preserved today that also is preserved in the house in mumbai so swami ji was we were talking about the same uh, that rice it is intact nothing has happened when bhagwan has given and out of that one blanket and one rudraksh and uh, stuff came to bevin kopa very strange i want to do a live today and uh, i want to ask swami ji those questions let him speak about it because until i instigate those things he will not <laughs> speak about it so i want to bring that thing out how these things happened and how the blanket given by bhagwan itan ended up here in this ashram so which he has kept it very uh, safe safely i'll show it to you right now it's in the next cottage where i told all the great mystics say and that is the place where uh, swami ji used to invite me long back long back when i started coming here very first time after coming in contact with bhagwan nityananda ganesh puri i was and after that i got pulled to kalingad and somehow i was guided to belgam and after meeting swami ji those days swami ji used to invite me in the mornings early mornings to come and sit and meditate with him so my mornings used to be my meditations would be with swami ji early in the mornings then i used to say here so that time i didn't know anything about spirituality and all that and uh, in fact i remember my first blog about any mystic was about this place which uh, where he was talking something it's still there on the internet uh, swami ji was talking in kannada and i tried to put some subtitles and all and that is the first time we when i had an idea oh this is possible so swami ji was very happy seeing that oh is this possible this way you can <laughs> I, who all sees it he was like that he, he was very uh, not understanding this modern concept but he was very excited oh it's good then bhagwan's things can reach that way and then uh, you know we started working on that in many ways so that room is there where and even today whenever uh, i come here 
I use that room to meditate. Swamiji's room it is, Swamiji prefers to meditate in that. It's called the Mahayoga Pita. Okay, and in that, one major thing is uh, Chaitanan Tirth Maharaj. How can I forget him? Chaitanan Tirth Maharaj was a disciple of Shivam Tirth Maharaj. Shivam Tirth Maharaj was the disciple of Vishnu Tirth Maharaj. And Vishnu Tirth Maharaj is the same person whom I had gone very desperately, wanted to see his cottage. He left long back in Devas, Madhya Pradesh. And all those mysterious uh, things happened in that uh, ashram there. And this ashram belongs to the Tirth lineage. Tirtha lineage. It's called Tirtha lineage. So I was so connected to, I didn't know why, probably some other lifetimes connection, but I was so connected to Vishnu Tirth Maharaj, his disciple Shivam Tirth Maharaj. And then, you know, I come to know that Shivam Tirth Maharaj's disciple, Chaitanan Tirth Maharaj, was again a great mistake. And he lived near Hubli Darwad, this side. He initiated Vijayanan Swami. <laughs> See the connection. So, Swamiji is even initiated by Chaitanan Tirth Maharaj. And Chaitanan Tirth Maharaj also came here and lived here in that same cottage, which I am telling. So, he was a great mystic, very, very detached with everybody. And then one final day, he just left Karnataka. And uh, he told his Shishya, that is Vijayanan Swami, he, he just... You know it? Bartan Bartan Swami. Ah, Bartan Swami. Swamiji is asking for lunch. He just come here. So, then I came to know Chaitanan Tith Maharaj has uh, initiated uh, uh, Swamiji and uh, Swamiji told me then that he just arrived because he was missing his Guru and for a long time he was not seen anywhere. He doesn't know where is Chaitanan Tith Maharaj. So, he was having some program here in Anandashram and that program, day, I, don't, I don't remember what program it was. But he says, suddenly he appeared. <laughs> From where he came, God only knows. He came and he blessed him. And he stayed in that uh, cottage, same cottage. And then, uh, there is an underground cave here, which was handmade. Which was built by hand only. Uh, Swamiji got it uh, done. Chaitanan Tirth Maharaj inaugurated that cave. He inaugurated that cave, blessed that cave. And he said, there is a Siddha Samadhi somewhere next. Somewhere, because this is all a Siddha Bhumi, where I am standing right now, it is known as the Siddha Bhumi. I have made around five blogs on Siddha Bhumi of North Karnataka, if you want you can see that. In that all the different uh, Jiva Samadhis and all that I have mentioned here. So this area, this Kshetra is supposed to be a Siddha Bhumi, where many Siddhas have actually lived and taken Samadhi here. Many centuries ago, centuries ago. And this is all related to again Parsharam Shetra. I told you, uh, Renuka Devi's temple is also Saundati, place called Saundati, around 30 kilometers from here. Uh, that is also linked with uh, Parsharam Ji's place. That is the same place where Parsharam Ji beheaded his mother. And uh, that place turned into a Shakti Peet. It's a, it's a Shakti Peet, uh, Renuka Devi's. And Renuka Devi uh, uh, is connected with uh, Vajreshwari in Ganeshpuri. It's all mystical connections. Very, very mystical connections all these are. So, yeah, I was talking about this uh, cave. He inaugurated the cave. In the Tirtha Sampradaya of uh, what I am talking, there are many, like, you know, above Vishnu Tirtha Maharaj also, there is Narayan Tirtha, it goes on. And see the connection. This Tirtha Sampradaya which is there, their highest order guru is Malaleshwari. Malaleshwari, whose, due to whose blessings I started shifting into awareness, which I often mention, this mystical experience that I had for 45 minutes in Thane bus stand, where everything just froze and I was in tears and I was reading a uh, document and I didn't know, my whole senses just dropped. There was no sound, I couldn't hear in the bus stop, is so crowded, but I could see people running around, buses coming, not a single sound I heard. I was... Tears were flowing and I was in that ecstatic ex state for around 45 minutes, I think. I have no proper idea on that. And then I walked in that road of Mumbai. I was going to meet uh, Vijayanan Swami in Ullasnagar. He had a program there. so And I, I just walked 5-6 kilometers. I don't even remember how did I do that on that busy streets in a different state. 
from that time that was my first experience of that awareness and that awareness i believe was malaleshwari's uh, blessings and malaleshwari is the highest mystic saint she is a sufi saint in kashmiri uh, saint if you see they, they link her to kashmiri saivism but she is beyond that she has no distinctions of anything one order or something so she blessed all this whole lineage you know so that lineage what i am talking about uh, where i had been to uh, devas and all those mystical things happened and then you know i find all strange connections that, that sampradaya narayan tirth maharaj and then we have uh, vishnu tirth maharaj and below him was uh, shivam tirth maharaj and below him was chaitanya tirth maharaj here and then i come to read about all their documents here all the books uh, written by that sampradaya that sampradaya is very close to sampradaya it does not allow anybody from outside sampradaya they have very strict rules and regulations so they follow and they all their dikshas are done in the cave because all their masters have this cave blessing you know the, the, in the sukshma rup they do that uh, blessings in the caves so anybody who goes to their ashram will never be allowed to go near the cave near the caves even i was not allowed when uh, those and we respect that no problem so cave is a main thing and see from that lineage only chaitanya tirth maharaj he came and he blessed this cave here underground cave and he went and he had only one word for swami ji do not hunt me he told him in kannada i believe this is what swami ji told me guru sharira villa sharira alla guru means guru is not the body so don't hunt for my body don't come behind me don't search for my body and i am always there with you this is the final word that he told and he went off after that swamiji has not seen so whenever swamiji is to talk about his guru chaitanya tirth maharaj i'll show you his photo also if you are connected in the soul life you will be able to understand okay those who have joined late might not be able to understand you can see the whole video i'm giving full description these are mysterious things which i have never talked before and i don't know why i'm talking it now so it's it's just a free flow that's happening so he told chaitanya tirth maharaj told swami vijayananda do not hunt for me i am always there with you and guru is not the body that's all he said and he went and after that vijayananda swami has never seen him i think it's more than uh, a decade and a half so whenever vijayananda swami used to talk about him before i used to see his eyes getting very moist his voice is gold low and uh, i could see that he is missing his guru so i said why why don't you search for him why why don't you find him out he is you know no he said he has told me not to do that but in spite of that i went uh, two three times searching here and there and then i come to know from some people oh he is in this part of maharashtra i try to go there and then i come to know he has escaped from there <laughs> so it's like deliberate he knows he knows so even i was told sometimes uh, somebody uh, Uh, he told chaitanya tirth mara some past of Mar- part of maharashtra that he he had gone to some devotee's house and he said don't tell anyone i'm here especially don't tell that person means vijayananda swami <laughs> so and he moves around so nobody knows where he is right now but he is there yeah, yeah. he is still in his body but no idea then we have sai kaka sai kaka also lived in this place he he, he stayed here in this place very strange sai kaka is connected with shambhala so he he is a very mysterious man i have tried to meet him even with uh, vijayanand swami once we had gone to ganeshpuri we were coming on the way we tried to uh, go to pune and he is also very mysterious he doesn't just meet like that you know and sometimes you know for months or years he is not there nobody knows where and all that so and he prefers isolation so when that amil totan pal but so he prefers isolation so and uh, he has strong links with uh, shambhala very mysterious uh, i've heard he keeps going and coming there and all that so anyhow these these are very uh, things which uh, they don't want to divulge and so i i think we should not be talking about those things there is another swami i said kumar swami in dharwad same place which where i'm mentioning where chaitanya tirth maharaj was there siddharudu swami was there dharwad is ashram is still there if you type tapavan dharwad you will find his ashram it's it's in the form of the temple is in the form of like shri chakra or something and his samadhi is still there but uh, i have somehow known that um, kumar swami was a great great mystic and he left his body voluntarily to take on a higher purpose in sambala so uh, that's how i know that he is still now in sambala 
he is operating from gyanganj gyanganj is another name for shambala so that is how he initiates his disciple here in darwad and the people also were linked so that there is a house there is a different kind of a structure in which people gather and uh, i've been there but i've not been on the days of their diksha and all that because it's their sampradaya whatever like you know and things happen there so he is supposed to be still operating from there so you can see all this mysticism very very deep mysticism which you can't um, which our minds cannot fathom but this is all there it all happens it's all there very much there are many other things also deeper which i i am not supposed to say i cannot say so for for us to understand this much is enough yeah i was talking about this place and uh, i'll while going i'll just show you that room also where uh, swami ji meditates even i prefer meditating and this whole place this kshetra is known as siddhabhumi and that time uh, swami ji had no idea when he came here because he came here in rags he used to sleep in bus stands uh, empty stomach no food no water no money sometimes even full of illness sickness and uh, most of the time even close to death and that kind of experiences he has undergone and intense suffering intense suffering the way he even tells i can see the shudders while he talks about it so probably it's it's all related to the prarabdha only but you know when the prarabdha due to guru kripa is the avdut his guru was an avdut you know from their touch only that divine divinity is so powerful that it can explode out the rest of the things you know so that explosion takes place the final explosion of all the karmas take place and that's very painful that very stressful so everything is written in his book how he came here and he came and used to just here there was nothing in this place it was just a one small tree was there and he just came and he started living here nothing nothing with him and then some mysterious experiences happened some villagers came here they had some mysterious experiences and all that and uh, he just gave vibhuti to somebody and because he didn't know what to do they came they saw there is a swami here and they came and he just gave vibhuti and that guy had piles or something and that was miraculously cured uh, in a few days and they the village just came back and they said here is somebody who is a mystic and then people started flocking around him and all those things then then you know all those things started happening then people started providing him uh, food or things and he used to just be here all the time chanting and uh, there is a small temple here malikarjun temple that is i believe a 800 year old uh, swayambhu shivalinga dedicated to lord malikarjuna another swarupa of lord shiva himself malikarjuna temples are very uh, powerful shivalinga is very powerful and that is very mysterious again that is just 5 minutes walk from here near the river side only 800 year old and it's very powerful whenever i go there i can uh, i feel that vibe it's like and it's a stone old stone just a small stone no uh, proper construct or something given to it also and uh, yeah malikarjun that shivalinga which is there he used to be most of the time around that uh, shivalinga and lot of mysterious things happened there he, had, he has written all that in the books and that is how slowly then people started coming giving here food and things to him and later on when he was guided to go to karnakar swami in matunga once uh, after many years he, he he never knew who is karnakar swami so but then in his first visit uh, when he went there karnakar swami directly told him how was the tea and biscuits so he uh, he, he didn't understand that because there was one time when he was so hungry and uh, this nobody was giving him food also here he was living in a small shed here in, right now where i am standing there only so a girl or somebody from uh, lady or girl is to come and give two biscuits and tea and a cup of tea keep and go and that is what swami ji used to take this was very very old story when swami ji had just come here so many years later when he went and met karnakar swami karnakar swami asked him how was the tea and biscuits and that time he had a flashback of oh it was him so karnakar swami said i have been watching over you since many years i have been taking care of you <laughs> so that is the time he it got unveiled to him that he is also my guru and then he started going to him and taking advices and all that in fact 
most of the things here uh, uh, is the blessing of karnakar swami including the hospital that they've been built here small hospital ayurvedic kendra nityananda arogya dham that also is under the guidance and blessings of karnakar swami so then karnakar swami never went anywhere but he whenever we used to i went twice with swami ji also and had his uh, darshan and very good experiences there so he he used to guide swami ji how to do certain things and he he just told swami ji i am there in the hospital don't worry i'll be i'll be taking care of that so from that time swami ji has put a photograph of his and there's a shivalinga installed there and he knows even in fact today morning also he was telling me karnakar swami is there he takes care of things there so that is even i felt the mysterious things there so this is a little bit mysteriously that i talked about these places and which i have never talked before but today i was very much i could say i don't know guided or prompted or whatever he knows so i made this and uh, actually i just had come to tell you that you know today i want to do a live with uh, swami ji in hindi we had done once before and we thought of naming that as avdoot vani because he he knows many avdoots you know, dozens of them he has lived with interacted with including the tatagiri swami which i go to siddappa ji if you see siddappa ji is there near tumkur uh, i have mentioned many times going to him who is in the langod and very high state uh, he is also guided by uh, swami ji is guided by him also in fact last few visits he had been to there tatagiri swami i i believe now uh, tatagiri swami is not meeting anybody so i think he is planning to unwind his physical presence here or something but he stopped giving visit that is what vijayan swami told me today morning uh, so he is gone more into silence now so that was also again a blessing to be with tatagiri swami in today morning only swami ji was talking about his last latest experience with uh, tatagiri swami there uh, i remember my last visit to tatagiri swami was uh, few months back i think 3 or 4 months back in bangalore when i was i went to meet him and every time he is every time experience is different this time he hit me twice very hard and uh, i'll i'll just share in brief what happened was there was a boy already standing there when me and my friend had gone there so he was waiting for the gates to he had closed you know in the past few months siddappa ji is not uh, meeting people so he closes the gate outside and his assistant who's there the boy who's there he says don't allow anybody so he locks the gate and he is inside his hut so many people stand and go i have heard even politicians and all those people they come businessmen come wait and go but he doesn't open and some people he allows some he doesn't and all that so that day when me and my friend had gone there the gate was closed and we were standing outside another boy was standing there he recognized me he said Uh, i see your videos and things and all so i was also happy and i asked what happened he said 20 25 minutes past he is not coming out i said okay we'll wait then we'll, we'll see what so my friend also had told me that uh, last visit he had gone to meet him two and a half hours he stood in the sun and he would not open and then finally he admitted him and sent him away he blessed him and sent him away so i said okay whatever time let's come when anyway. you so we were prepared and standing near the gate Uh, 15 20 minutes had passed and siddappa ji was in his hut so he 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 was working there and he saw us he asked what and in his ferocious form <laughs> one long coat and you know full white beard and all scattered he said what i said uh, we want to meet you outside the gate we were he said get out from here no meeting nothing i don't want to meet anybody and he walked into his hut we stood there because i am used to, we are all used to their language and things so we just stood there calmly five minutes passed and then i saw that he is not going to come i think he was in his hut resting probably and then uh, i closed my eyes and i was connecting with him and i was just telling sitapa ji we have come till here every time you give us food or something or something but this time even if you don't do that it's okay in my mind i'm talking to him we have come here just just Put one gaze on us, one look at us, one little blessing that way also. Or you every time give us kasha and tea and all that. That's if you if you don't give, that's okay. No food, it's okay. At least a little water you give from your hand, something like that, like a tirtha, and we will go. You won't believe when that very moment he barged out of the hut and he came out 
and again he looked at me and he said what do you want i said swami ji your darshan i told you right that i am not available here why don't you guys understand all are behind me simply like that get out from here you are telling and all that and he was blasting me like anything i just stood quietly there we three of us and he went on i told her to get out from here you don't understand and then next moment he immediately in the same continuity you don't understand and then he said will you have food <laughs> my eyes brighten i said yes 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 then will you have food then i said yes he told her okay open the gate and he went into the hut i said yeah done then we went in see how compassionate beings they are whatever they are from outside you yeah, they look very ferocious they act very even bhagwan was that way he to throw stones at people give bad words and abuse so that they wanted to keep people away from them, you know do all this leelas but inside they are as soft as cotton inside very much compassionate so i could see that in uh, the tone of uh, appa ji who said okay coming and then when i went and sat inside that hut and he he was as usual he was picking up the tea thing and giving everybody kashaya the same kashaya i said okay kashaya is there today <laughs> i thought it's not there but before giving he kept it on the chulla the kashaya and he went inside the room and he brought a jug of water a mug of water and very angrily fast walking he came towards me i was sitting in one corner and he came and gave that mug in, in front of me like this. and in kannada he said kudi means drink so i didn't know how to take it you know i i was trying to take it this way i thought he's giving me like this he got very angry and he said i said take and i said okay he's taking i took it with both hands he pulled it back i said take then i thought maybe one hand i should take one hand again he pulled back so five six times he did and i was i had no sweat was there on my face i didn't know what is he trying to do like you know so i am a very helpless state and i was just looking at him what to do i knelt down i stood up i bent down to take that water he was not giving and then he was saying neer bekla nenige kudi kudi means you wanted water right you wanted wanted water right drink 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 <laughs> then it flashed me suddenly oh my god this is exactly what i was saying in out of that gate i was just saying you know you don't give us anything even little water will do and here is bringing the water and he and then he finally gave it in my hand and before giving when he was doing you know not this not this not this he said you better take it now otherwise i'll eat you i was trying to take but he was not giving and then he got angry you know full ferocious he kept the mug aside and with his right hand he gave me two ice here one he gave and i saw him he was so hardly i said i'm going to crush now that was full of sweat but when he hit me there was no pressure only it was just like somebody touched me like this but the it was very hard one he did and then he took his hand and one more he gave side so two times and i got i was like now what does he want and then he gave me the mug and he gave me the mug and his face ferocious face relaxed and then he said drink calmly he said drink then i drank one sip because other guys also said drank and gave it back. drink then again little more i drank drink <laughs> he made me drink almost that full mug <laughs> then i drank it and then he took that same mug and he gave it to the other two guys also and then he went and sat with his cigarette and so every time i go i used to buy him cigarette so he will not serve for anything i bring fruits and all those things you know so he'll see all the edibles i don't want this what the hell will i do with all this throw all this away he used to he'll always say that i don't need all this of yours i don't need any money and all yeah, i don't need all keep all the stuff and then he'll search something frantically in that i know what he's searching he's searching for the cigarette packet so <laughs> i will keep one cigarette inside that so packet and he'll go and pick it many people give that and then he with that smoke he was sitting and then he was, he started abusing looking up and abusing abusing he does that many times many people are scared at that time it's very scary scene and then he told the other guys Uh, the kannada guy who was actually with uh, siddhapa ji he said who are these guys what do they do then all we were sitting in line then one said i am a computer engineer one said i am a software engineer then it came to me i said i do online stuff whatever i could explain and then he said oh all too educated guys he said in kannada 
very big degree people and then he uh, looked at us and he said can you do this do you have this degree and he pulled full smoke inside and we were looking at him and no smoke came out <laughs> said, and when he pulled his eyes went on dark and he was like this in in a different state for some time and then when he put his uh, eye down no smoke came out do you have this degree he said this is what you must have degree <laughs> he said that. and then he told that guy if these guys want to meditate ask them to go and sit in that cave there otherwise ask them to get out so that kind of guy told us he's a person or something i said we understood we'll go there he said go 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 then he sent us to that cave which is constructed there around 45 minutes one hour we were there and we came back and then all those things happened then he gave us some some more tea and all that and he quietly sent us away that was my last visit to siddhapaji some four months back before that two three other experiences happened anyways that's not important right now but what i am trying to tell you is the mahima of these people well vijayan swami was telling me today morning about that tikare swami that he is no more meeting people and he is closed down completely he is in silence and all that and there is another boy who perhaps he has appointed him and or anointed him as his successor or what i don't know because i heard that he just gave his loin cloth to him and that guy is wearing it now and uh, i don't know what all and then swami ji was just updating this is the updates so i was like oh my god uh, see the progression of events that's happening and this then uh, just i told swami ji swami ji can we have a live he said okay evening we can have so i just have to fix a time maybe 3 3 i don't know let me check out what's the time now 12 41 okay maybe probably 3 3 3 i'll just ask him and confirm and then i'll fix a event on this page um, probably in the nityananda group if you have not joined just look at my jake uh, light profile on the top you'll have a post of nityoham nityanandam that is a group i have just started because i want to dedicate all these uh, things you know some different things and all connected with uh, nityananda the people the mistakes the stories the experiences uh, the charitras the teachings the chidakasha geeta everything i would just want to put there including the people who are uh, serving him in so many ways or sharing anything wisdom or bhajan satsang i put my mind to there and the problem why i i made that group was because in many of the groups uh, somehow i am not admitted whenever i make try to make any post uh, somehow those posts get rejected they are not approved some places i was uh, restricted even in posting and all that i don't know so i quietly uh, just pulled back it's their wish no problem so then i thought these are many things which i want to share so let me make a small group and put it there so that it can preserve there for all the devotees or those who like nityananda to understand it is not what they see this is not uh, what we see because it's uh, seeing is very deceptive you know here is a naked man sitting here in completely isolation and you know look at him so if the world looks at it they will not know what is this all about and since i have undergone a major transformation in my life i have had very mystical experiences my whole life is you know began to change after uh, coming in contact with him and that is how i got in depth with studying the mistakes and avadutas and writing about them and bringing this knowledge and sharing this wisdom to the world because probably it's their their uh, their way of doing i do not know because i do not know who's doing this most of the time i just happen to uh, everything just spontaneously happens so it took me time to realize that we are not the doers so in that faith and belief i am just sharing all these details i'll be putting it there i do not know if uh, the english and hindi thing will make any sense because i think that's also for good that swami ji knows only hindi and he's talking hindi so that will reach uh, many people who want to know in hindi most of my posts are in english i i'll try to do that in uh, hindi also there are two three other uh, videos also that i have to translate it to other languages where people are asking a lot one is vidyanand swami of guruvan who made a video and one is of mohan swami ji which i want to share it has been 2 years now it's very important uh, uh, recording that i did video recording uh, from sogal where one day we were just talking in his hut and he began talking mysterious things and uh, i asked his permission if i can record he said yes and i recorded that but he is talking in kannada completely and he went on to talk even the details about jeeva samadhi how it is taken what happens 
because he is from that sampradaya of sivanand parmams of kerala vadagara that place where even today they are uh, the shishyas take jiva samadhi even today so and that uh, that has a link with nityananda parampara also the nityananda lineage also because swami sivanand parmamsa and nityananda were both in kerala at the same time they even met together and uh, nityananda bhagwan was very young at that time in his teens probably and you can see a photograph where there is a sage and in whose lap nityananda is sitting that is sivanand parmamsa so they had connections again they're both and uh, this lineage comes from uh, that mohan swami so mohan swami was my first you can say a, a kind of guru only because i used to go f- to him for advice and he he gave me a lot of wisdom on this path and this last visit where i went with shivdas bhai to him and he started revealing these things about jiva samadhi what exactly happens and so i recorded that so that's also a big i think it's almost 2 hours or something i believe but i have not been able to translated because it's all subtitles every single word of kannada it's a hectic work so i have not been able to do due to time issues but since he permitted me to put it so i want to share that also these are all uh, day ones very very deep mystical uh, things i wanted always to work with uh, vijanand swami on this uh, aspect because he has so much of profound wisdom so much so much in depth and i believe it has still not come out to the world it must have been in the books and the, but you know when he talks there is in between lot of things when he's talking the books also have lot of experiences but in between also inside that there is a subtler aspect you know which while talking i try to dig out and he conveys that so i have always been very keen to uh, catch up those things but unfortunately he is so fast he is so fast that he can talk so many words in a couple of minutes and from one topic he'll jump to the other so by the time even if i'm recording or working on that he will have gone to something else so they are that way they are very spontaneous so i have somewhat not been able from past one year i've been telling that i want to work on alam prabhu ji's uh, uh, tattvas with uh, vijayan swami because it's the whole text is in kannada alam prabhu was a great 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 mystic uh, and he talks about it i get uh, goosebumps whenever swami ji talks about it the the depth of that subtlety higher truths what you call it i always wanted to work but again depending on swami ji's time and my time you know for that i'll have to spend a lot of time here which is not happening i don't know when that will happen but if that happens it will be a blessing so that is what i was talking to swami ji also today so today if you guys are free at around 3:33 i think so i'll just ask him once what is the time and if it, if it is fine then we will meet at that time but yeah i told you i'll show you that room let me do that i was just preferring to talk here because uh, it's very quiet here this is named as anand ashram if you see in kanangad in kanangad there is anand ashram of papa ji papa ji's ashram is very close to nityanand ashram uh, uh, i think half an hour by auto or something so that ashram's name is anand ashram where mata ji was there his disciple mata ji was there and swami ji has been very close to that ashram so that is how he took this name from there <laughs> so they they call it nityananda ashram but the name registered is ananda ashram namaste hello sir so this is the temple here i have shown this many times before this temple janam swami's photo is here so here he said he has deliberately not kept uh, he has deliberately not kept murti of bhagwan because then the touchability problems will begin because he says in multiple places people are not allowed to touch the statue they are not allowed to go near and then, then there is a lot of restrictions and also he never promoted an idol because he is not for idol worship image is just for a symbolic preference he is completely 
Advait. He is completely inward. So he, he doesn't acknowledge anything external stuff, any external rituals and all that. Here in the temple, they do, children do because it is needed for them. For the atmosphere in the ashram, it is needed that people do the Dvaita procedures. But it is for them, but he is beyond it. So when we talk, we talk something beyond it. So that's one good tattva that I see here in this place. I strongly do feel his presence here, Nityananda's presence here. See, it's raining. This is Karnataka. Beautiful Karnataka. Silent Karnataka. And I have to go there. I have to, I think, run literally because I'll get wet. The camera might get wet. The mobile might get wet, I'm seeing. So what I'll do is, I'll just hide this mobile and run across that side. Till I reach that room there, I just want to show you the room. Let me see how I can do it. So just stay up. sugarcane plantation yes finally here oh I think it's locked somebody is inside meditating okay, no problem this is the cave that I was talking about This also is kept locked, huh? but I'll just show you from outside. I'll have to take the keys and come. Maybe in the next session I'll do that. Problem is if I go inside, the network will go off. So below this is that uh, cave. This is man-made cave. Believed to be a samadhi. There is a samadhi of some siddha down there. Okay, I guess the room is closed. One second. Okay. So I guess the room is closed. Somebody is meditating there. And uh, uh, I don't want to talk loudly also here now. Anyways, what I'll do is, you know, before the 3.30 session begins, I'll try to just... I'll uh, begin it from that room only. I'll show you the things around the blanket and all that of Bhagavan Nityananda and the room where all these mystics have stayed for a long time. And then we can continue with the live also. Let me see how the thing goes. So 3.33, just let me ask and then I'll put an update here whenever the live is going to happen. So if you're interested, you can join at that time. Much divine love and light to you all. Stay blessed. Om Namo Bhagavate Nityananda.